Good evening and welcome <clears throat> to the Canadian Orthodox Monastery of All Saints of North America. I've just returned, as some of the viewers know, from a long journey uh, to Newfoundland, Montreal, and uh, down into the United States, into the state of Maine, passing through the very beautiful states of Vermont and New Hampshire on the way, and uh, I met a really lovely group of Orthodox Christians in Newfoundland, and I uh, had a great visit. Uh, some of you saw the one video that we made at uh, Cape Spear in Newfoundland, and uh, my first visit to Newfoundland, and really hoping to go back again before too long. Also uh, visiting in the state of Maine at um, University of Southern Maine, and in Portland, Maine. Uh, where I spoke at a rally in favor of the health care reform bill in the United States. The uh, local Roman Catholic Archbishop was also present. As many of you know, the Roman Catholic uh, Church, the Episcopal Church, and several evangelical churches have strongly supported the uh, health care reform bill as a thoroughly Christian advance in society. And um, I made a small broadcast about it whilst I was in the state of Maine and uh, put that broadcast online at the time. And as might be expected, the uh, extreme religious right uh, responded with the usual venom about it. And, well, I perhaps have more faith in the American Congress than some Americans do because... I believe that by the time the uh, bill is debated and merged with various bills and the compromises have been worked out, it'll be something that would be much more moderate and acceptable to uh, the right-wing uh, constituency in the United States. So, um, but it is really something that has been part of the Christian faith from the very beginning to provide health care to people. It was really a ministry in the church in, in ancient times. And so the idea of a universal health care system is really profoundly Christian and profoundly in tune with the First Ecumenical Council and the Christians of the first centuries. Uh, I had mentioned that one of the greatest moral advances for any nation was when people will share the burden for one another. And I'm not go despite all of the uh, hubris from the ultra right uh, in in comments on my my broadcast. I'm not going to cower or back down about it. Uh, the United States uh, of all nations on the face of the earth is is in desperate need of serious health care reform. Despite um, people not desiring to know what's going on in their own country. If one wishes to see the third world, one has only to go to Los Angeles or San Francisco or Chicago or any major city and you'll find the third world and even worse than some third world countries in the major cities in the United States. And the people in these third world ghettos in the United States in general have no access to health care. I know they say, oh well, they can go to an emergency room if they're having a heart attack or some serious emergency at a given moment. But that says nothing about ongoing health care or being able to go in when a problem is developing and the process of developing. The other thing that probably needs reform is the way that people in the United States have absolutely no choice or very little choice in their health care. If you're insured by a given insurance company, you generally have to go to an HMO where the doctors have a conflict of interest between you and the insurance company. And one of their primary functions is to save money for the insurance company, not necessarily to give you the best treatment available. The wealthier you are, the better treatment you get. But uh, having toured a few modern American hospitals, some of the maternity wards certainly look like um, uh, the Hilton Hotel or something like that, which is probably not necessary and only increases the cost of medical insurance. But if one also visits a, a modern cancer center in Canada, they're not 
uh, the, 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 the rooms and wards are not like the Hilton Hotel, but one is impressed by the, the beauty and the, the gardens and the general layout of the buildings and the um, technology that exists in these, in these places. And of course, the uh, medical research in Canada has produced many major breakthroughs in the last two decades. And uh, so the, the, uh, the health of, of medical research in Canada is, is very high indeed. Uh, but that isn't really the point. The point is that uh, people in all countries, uh, eventually, uh, even countries in Africa, uh, people need to have full access to modern health care, not just in some kind of an emergency, but uh, also when they're starting to develop or, or to prevent. Uh, a lot of miscarriages take place among women who are unable to go and, and get ongoing health care during their pregnancies. And I've interviewed uh, women uh, in the States before who opt for an abortion because they can't afford the health care and um, the, the medical expenses involved. So I think that the health care bill will probably cut back on that kind of abortion and on stillbirths. And uh, again, I think the American Senate and House of Representatives, particularly the Senate, is going to uh, compromise down this bill so that it's acceptable even to the ultra-right or to, well, nothing is ever acceptable to the ultra-right, that it's acceptable to right-wing uh, people in the United States. And I hope that Christians everywhere, and particularly Orthodox Christians everywhere, will realize that universal health care is a profoundly Christian undertaking and that uh, it, it was a ministry of the church. And as a ministry of the church in, in ancient times, it was one of the reasons that Christianity had such a profound impact on the Roman Empire and in a way conquered the Roman Empire for Christ. Um, and perhaps the attitude we find among modern Christians is one of the reasons why Christianity has practically no impact whatsoever in modern societies. And that's something that needs to be thought about and weighed. So uh, I, I really want to, to say that uh, I stand by whatever I said about the healthcare system in the United States. and. I'm not about to cower or back down before the ultra-right-wing religious movement. Um, I, I think it's an unchristian movement that can't claim any relationship to Christ whatsoever except using his name. So, and I know this will elicit uh, several more uh, savage comments, but that's perfectly all right with me. Um, the thing is that we have to really stop and think about why Christianity has lost its influence in the world. Why in Europe... Uh, all the combined efforts of Christian bodies could not have any impact on the uh, European Constitution. And to think about whether we want us to continue with our secular societies, that is, our secular governments. Uh, the alternative to secularism in much of the Western world today is Islam, not Christianity. So we have to remember that um, Christianity has, has lost that impact and that power that it once had, and there has to be a reason. And the reason, of course, is Christians, not somebody else. And we need to weigh that very, very carefully and see just why this is taking place. Uh, that's why we're going to have another conference here at the monastery inviting Protestants of every degree and uh, Catholics and Anglicans to discuss, again, what have we done with the gospel? Where have we buried it? Where have we hidden it? Uh, and try to see how we could have a, a yet greater impact on the world around us uh, as, a Christian, as Christian bodies. And uh, I think that's extremely important. It's also important for us to face up to and admit that um, the Christian message as it's been preached in North America has been one of the sources of atheism, not something that undermined atheism. So we need to think about that very seriously. And uh, you're all welcome to send all the venom and fire you want in comments. It uh, certainly doesn't bother me at all. Um, and But we're going to keep struggling to have a new um, approach to pro-life, one that's tactically more effective and which will give more results, and to the way Christians in, inter, interact with society in general to see if we can't make Christ, give Christianity back some of its authority.